Imagine. Imagine a school where questions lead to learning and where wondering is a habit of mind. Imagine an education that values childhood and its wisdom. An education that creates a love of knowing. What would you call such a place? We call it a Renaissance school. Here, arts, design, engineering, and the sciences are lively natural contexts for the development and application of skills. This story actually kind of takes place in the old days where you chop ice to get ice instead of using refrigerators. The way we've developed the curriculum is to make sure that children have a breadth and a depth in subject areas and that they develop the skills in order to follow inquiry, that they learn how to ask questions and how to deepen their questions. So it's not simply what is it and how does it work, but there are other kinds of questions we can ask about where does it come from, how could it change, what is it connected to, what's my responsibility for what it is I am learning. Yeah. And it's sticking up here and it's only supposed to go like, you should do like a popsicle and it goes and it's broken so we can have a weapon on it. Yeah. One of the great things about working at the Renaissance School is the small class sizes because I really just get to spend so much time with each child as an individual and I get to know them on a very deep level. If I teach a lesson and I see some inconsistency or some misunderstanding just in one kid, I can say, okay, you and I are going to work on this for just one more minute while the rest of them go play the game. I can do that. Part of our work here is to continue to layer the fantastical and the factual together so that we weave childhood in with the kinds of skills and concepts we know that they'll be needing in their adult lives. And as we do that, we look for things such as the marionette project, and we look at the body, the skeleton, as being something that not only gives us structure, but also gives us form and protection. And then from there, we use the concept of 50%. We took measurements of our body length and we cut those down into half. We also so. looked at different ways things were joined and still allowed movement in the world. And the reason why I put it on his hand is so he can wave, and his elbow is actually how you wave like this. We also looked at the same time at faces and face structure, and we used clay. We fused eyes out of glass, put the hair on their heads, and they had the glass in their eyes, and their faces came to light. These are my brass instruments, and one of them are the, um, the front one, the tent, the trombone and the tuba. We're making Wagyu scrapbooks and we're making them like this. So this is my first page, which is a hail haiku. And then it's a tornado, hurricane, Venn diagram, a hail haiku, and um, this um, cool tornado mad lip poem. One of the elements of their display work and project work is the actual display. Once a display is made, the children have taken time to learn to do a French line. They've mounted their work on paper before gluing it, placing it many times, getting feedback. And then they create a reflective template. They could review it and say, you know, I got a lot of questions around the use of my color. Perhaps I didn't do a clear enough job on the expository writing. So they can set a goal for themselves for the next project. So the picture that she was. Oh. Oh. Alright, about Megalodon, that's an ancient bitch. It was from long time ago. It was one of the biggest sharks. And really, really dangerous. The approach uh, they learn from and we take them uh, is very much based in engineering and design technology where they get very accustomed to those stages of prototype, trial, rough draft. Just as well on the opposite end of that, a great deal of reflection both um, in a fantastical and a narrative sense as well as expository and process writing. So while you see a lot of beautiful product around, it's not so much about the product, it's about the process and getting there. Kids will have a tendency to overcomplicate um, complicated ideas and 
So to celebrate that and examine that, we worked on a Rube Goldberg machine. So they have two days to do it. Uh, to cover the span of two rooms, have 20 exchanges of energy to reach a goal together, to have to uh, each take their own elements and make them combine with others. So you put goals and then limitations on to work within, and what they rise to is always incredible. look for building their confidence and confidence as real actors in the world. Um, we're not just playing at doing science that someone else has done and we want to reaffirm it. We're actually looking for genuine questions, things that are really important to us, maybe with a twist or a gap, um, some sort of discrepancy in it so that we can make our own sense of it and again offer it back as a contribution or for the next layer of questions. We don't usually end on a final note. We usually end on asking more questions.